Hey guys, and welcome to episode 18 of How to Be a 3D Animator. In this episode, we're talking about constraints. I'll be talking in detail, and I'll walk you through some of the examples we're going to be talking about in this video. So stay till the end, and as always, if you find any value at any point in this video, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos, and let's jump right into this week's video. So in case you didn't know already, this is what a constraint is. You have a target object, we'll call it parent, and you have a second object, the constrained object, which we'll call the child. The child is constrained to the parent, which means the parent will get no sleep. No, that's, that's the wrong line. Which means depending on which constraint option you choose, the child will mimic the parent. This is all sounding a little too real. We'll dive a little deeper. So for example, in Maya, there are four types of constraints. We have point constraint, Orient, scale, and lastly, parent constraint. With point constraint, the child only follows the translation of the parent. That means the child only mimics the movement of the parent and not the rotation or skill or anything else. With orient constraint, child only mimics the rotation of the parent. With scale constraint, as the name suggests, it only follows the scale of the parent. This one in particular isn't really used that often. It is very situational. And lastly, we have parent constraint which applies both translation and rotation, meaning if your parent object moves or translates to a different location while rotating 180 degrees, your child object will mimic both the position change and the rotation of the parent. The constraint most used in animation is parent constraint. So let's dive a little deeper in that. So this is what we have. In this particular situation, I want the yellow box to be the child and I want the orange box to be the parent. So I want the yellow box to be following the parent and actually you know what let me add a rotate to this as well. So let's rotate this like this and essentially I want the yellow box to be mimicking what the parent is doing. So we're gonna go ahead and explore the constraint parent option here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on our orange box which is the parent. Shift select our, our child, our yellow box change modeling to animation. Now we have the constraint option. So we're gonna go to constraint, um, parent, and we're actually gonna click the box uh, beside parent. We're gonna open this up and we're presented with this set of options. By default, you have maintain offset on. What this means is when you constrain your child to the parent, the child's original position stays the same after the parenting. So all the changes will apply from the child's position. Here's what I mean by that. So if we have maintain on, and also down here, you can select particular axes that you want to affect. So let's say you just want to affect the X and Y axes. You just click on those, but in most cases you want all. So we're gonna go ahead and click add. This is, again, this is with, with the maintain offset on. So now when we play this, the child is following the parent from its original position. Now I'm gonna go ahead and control Z and undo what we just did. So now um, let's try the other method. So I'm selecting my parent again, then the child, go into constraint, parent, and I'm gonna turn off maintain offset. Now what this does is if we go to wireframe, we see that the box is centered to the parent. So now if I press play, we can't see the box because it's smaller, but um, when we go to wireframe, we see that it's mimicking the exact movement of the parent, but it's not offset. It, it didn't keep the position it had. It got repositioned to the center of the parent instead. There's a lot of scenarios where this is useful, so I'm just going to go ahead and control Z that. What you want to have is make sure the maintain offset is on. Maintain offset is almost always needed on if you want to keep the position, the original position of the child. Now let's say I parented this and I actually don't want this, I can't control Z and I don't want these two to be parented anymore. A way to delete this constraint is select the child and if you see right here, you have the name of the object and then underscore parent constraint one. This is the name of the constraint that's on the box right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and control C that and I'm going to my layout, I'm going to outliner and I'm control Ving that in there, I'm pasting that in there and I'm gonna open this up and this red chain you see, the red chain icon, that is a constraint. So I'm gonna click on that constraint and press delete. So now our constraint on the child box is gone. 
Here are a couple useful situations where constraints come in handy. A character holding an object like a sword. Um, I'll actually be making a separate video for holding a sword and sword constraints, so stay tuned for that. Another situation would be a character picking up something or holding onto it like a box. In this case, we'll most likely have the box constrained to one hand, in particular the hand facing the camera, and the other hand will be constrained to the box. So as we animate the hand facing the camera, it moves the box, which inherently moves the other hand. This is sort of a hierarchy of constraints, and as you guys can see in the visuals right here. Another situation would be an object going from one hand to another. So in this case, you will have to unconstrain one hand as the object gets constrained to the second hand. So it's, it's a little bit more tricky, you just have to play it with the parenting controls you get at the attribute editor. I'll actually go through this right now with you guys, let's just hop right into Maya. Alright, I'm gonna quickly run you guys by an example of a ball being transferred from one hand to another. So here I'm gonna go ahead and selecting the arm, shift selecting the ball, going to animation, constraint, make sure maintain offset is on, and add. Oh, I figured out the problem. So the problem is I actually have a key set on the sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And now, I'm again, I'm going to select the hand. Then click on the sphere. The sphere doesn't have a key now. So I'm going to go to constraint, parent. And now if we move the arm, the sphere is moving with the arm. So I'm going to go ahead and animate this down. So there we go. So at frame 15, we want this arm to, we want the ball to transfer to the second arm. Now we have something like this, but as you guys can see, nothing really happens afterwards. So what we're going to do is uh, click on the left hand controller, shift select the sphere, and then parent as well. So now when we click on the sphere and we look in the attribute editor, we have uh, two different attributes here. We have arm one, which is the you can see right there the right arm and then the left arm and we have to set keys here so right now we have the ball separated between the two arms the values of the constraint is equally attributed to both arms but we want it to go from the right arm to the left arm at frame 15. so what we're going to do is come to frame 14 and i'm going to reduce the value on the left arm attribute to zero and i'm going to right click on it and key selected so now we have a key on that i'm also going to set a key on the right arm as well with the value as, as one so the left arm value zero right arm value one and then we're going to go to frame 15 and now we're going to do the opposite we're going to make the right arm value zero and go ahead and set a key and then, then make the left arm value at one and then again set a key and now we should have something like Oh, actually, we didn't animate the left hand leaving, so we're going to do that now. We're going to bring that left hand back. There we go. Now we have something like this. The ball going from the right arm to the left arm. And again, all we did was constrain the two and select the ball and edit these. Um, if you guys notice on the timeline, you can't actually see the keys set. But if you go to the graph editor, uh, you can see them right here. They're sort of invisible, but once you go to the graph editor and press F to find selected, you will see these two attributes here. You can either move them around to different keys. So we, right now we have it switching for at frame 16 instead, or let's just move it farther so it's frame 18. So now it won't switch until frame 18. So it kind of drops into the other arm and you can edit it here. So anyways, I hope you guys found some value in this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos. So the Patreon page is finally here. Uh, if anyone is interested or anyone wants to actually support the channel farther, there is a Patreon page. I will link it down below. And of course, I don't want you guys to contribute for nothing. So I went ahead and... So for the past two weeks, I've been working on a PDF file. And this PDF file is an animation handbook. 
So you can just download this on your phone. If you're on, if you're commuting, you can take a look at it. Or if you're just bored, you can just open it up on the computer and it has tips, it has tricks, it has scripts that I use. A lot of the lessons that we talk about in this video are compressed into small little consumable bits of information, which you can just look at, review. So it's just something extra you can have in your pocket. And this is available to any level of the Patreons, any tier supporter. On top of this, there's a few other goodies. Um, you guys can check out the page and look at all the stuff that different tiers offer. So let me know what you guys think about that or if you think some of the tiers are unfair or whatnot. Just give me, let, me, let me know your opinion. Let me know what you think of the whole Patreon thing. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Happy animating and I will see you guys in the next video.